We talk a lot about the 70s on this show. That was a good time. It seems like a good era rife for material for this thing. There's a lot of people trying to figure themselves out. A lot of people just trying to get away with stuff also. Yeah, just in American culture at large. But particularly, I think, in the NFL. This rule we're gonna talk about today is like a great encapsulation of that. Okay. It's based off of a play called the Holy Roller. It's another one of those plays that spawned a rule because the NFL was like, no, uh, you can't, okay, no, you can't also <laughs> do that. In 1978, John Madden's Oakland Raiders are playing the Chargers in San Diego. The Raiders are down six points. They have the ball with 10 seconds left to okay. go. And in short, what happens is the quarterback intentionally fumbles the ball and then in a little bit of backyard football foolery, the Raiders just kind of kick and muff the ball <laughs> yeah. down the field as much as they can until it ends up in the end zone, and sure enough, they recover it and score the game-winning touchdown at the end of the game. So the Raiders score a textbook touchdown. Yeah, it looks fine, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. There is a lot going on in this play. First, you have the intentional fumble by the quarterback, Ken Stabler, right. which I think in 2019 rules is for sure a forward pass. But but at the time, no replays. You don't have replays. No HD. Can't the, slow that down. If I had to go back and referee a game in the 70s, knowing that now there's like multiple angles, there's review, there's all, I would have so much anxiety back then to be like, I'm gonna see this once, and I have to call it right. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Or I just want to give a shit. Yeah. We have that. What is a pretty clear illegal move that right. they got away with. But right. then the rest of it is in question, right? How can you fumble forward and keep that ball moving without ending the play? And you need to, knowing you need to cover ground. You need to cover ground, right? The running back, his name is Pete Bonazak. There are more fake names in this series <laughs> than any other one we do. Pete Bonazak has like an adventure land, like Pete Bonazak's <laughs> adventure park. Kids, no matter what you do, do not ride the log flume at Bonazak's world of adventure. He does this move where it's like, uh, oh, oh. And it's like pretty clear right. that the intention was just to get the ball further down the field and not make any sort of real recovery. He picks it up the way that a virgin puts on a condom in every teen movie. <laughs> 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 oh, it's on my ear. <laughs> yeah. And then the ball ends up rolling into the end zone where tight end Dave Casper falls on the ball, recovers it, they score the touchdown, and they win the game with the extra point. The NFL did have to come up with a rule after this to keep this from happening, which the rule still exists today. Okay. It's known unofficially as the Ken Stabler rule. Mm -hmm. But basically it says, if the offense fumbles the ball and it's a fourth down or you're within the last two minutes of the half, mm -hmm. only the player who fumbled the ball can recover it and advance it. If another player recovers the ball, play is blown dead and then they spot the ball at the spot of the recovery, or at the spot of the fumble if it has moved forward. I love the idea of like intentionally fumbling. Yes. Like the, the language in this rule allows that as like, yeah, you can. So Ken Stabler maintained for decades that it was just a genuine fumble. And then in one of his most recent interviews from like 10 years ago, he was like, nah, I just pitched it. <laughs> Because I was going down, he very explicitly said, oh, why not just shake the dice? And it wasn't even him being like old and like slipped up and just being like, eh, no, whatever, I'll, I'll fess up. There's one. Gotta get into heaven somehow. <laughs> Holy rolling my way up there. I understand the stipulations they essentially added with this rule of like fourth down and in the last two minutes of a half. Right. Because like outside of those situations, the team's not going to risk intentionally fumbling. But I also feel like the NFL has done themselves a disservice where they've put all of these steps involved that anyone could get hung up on at sure. a certain point that will leave the refs scrambling for this situation that I'm sure at this point Sure. rarely happens, and when it does, like, they well, might not necessarily know what to do. This has, in fact, come up. 2014, it happened to the uh, Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers had a ball swatted out of his hand as he was going for a pass. It was a fumble. It rolled into the end zone. Eddie Lacy went to pick it up, but because he was not Aaron Rodgers, and it was within the last two minutes, when he touched it, they had to rule it dead, but he was in the end zone, so that became a safety. Because it was behind where the fumble... Right. 
originally So that occurred. would have been the spot, okay. but because he's in the end zone, it's a safety. So they got dinged. They lost that game. Boo-hoo, right? Yeah. But it is a, a rule from an era when it was like, no, boys, you can't, you can't do that. I think what I love about rules like this that are enacted at certain points in the game mm -hmm. is the refs are essentially hanging on to knowledge waiting for it to happen and then be like, ah, right, gotcha, gotcha. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, you know, they're not like <laughs> coming up to the teams and be like, hey, just remember, um, if you fumble, we're and at just, the point of the game. I want to point everyone to pages 14, 36, and 142. That's why they take a timeout at the two minute warning. <laughs> so they can pull out the rule book and go, that's why okay, right, the last two minutes. That's why it's called a two minute warning. It's a warning the so that you can all go to your rule books and say, okay, now remember, it's a two minute warning. We fumble the ball. You have to be the one to pick it back up if that's the case. What else do we have to remember? <laughs> but it's, they wheel out a whiteboard. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, now offense, this is all your stuff. This now, if you fumble it. Well, they cut away to a commercial when that happens, so you, what you don't see is they all actually run back inside, and they have a giant rule book that they're like, oh, right, 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 right. Okay, cool, 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 we got it, good. And then they all run back outside. <laughs> the two-minute two cram fest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks for watching Weird Rules. Uh, Will and I are stuck in this black box. Um, all of the lights and cameras are off, but they uh, left us locked in here. So if you wouldn't mind going to another SB Nation video and leaving a comment, letting them know that we're still here, uh, that would be great. Please help us.